Oh, good morning, Tartaria, Australia, and Autodidactic. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey, how are we? Well, this is take two of last week's podcast because we did it and it was great. <laughs> and I think we said some profound things. <laughs> then we lost it. Yes, it may have been my fault. I know, I was doing it. It was actually a really, a really good conversation. So we'll try and remember what we said, but but we did have it already. <laughs> But technical issues, technical difficulties. Yes, and then it's been impossible to find the time. So um, this is last week's podcast. But first, first and foremost, we're starting because we always end up chucking this at the back when it should be at the front. But this time, it's putting it right at the front. So everyone, this Friday is the beginning of our community water fast. Can you believe that we're doing it? We're doing it, Campbell. We're doing it. It's here. Yep. With um, 24 awesome um, community members who have signed up to take on the challenge and the task. Yeah. And look, I, I, you know, I think it's a super courageous and bold move for everyone who's put their hand up. Whether you complete the journey with us or not, it's still amazing that you got to the point of, um, you know, putting your intention, setting your intention on such an idea. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and the link's below, guys, so you can still sign up. There's still a couple of days left as long as you're up and um, all signed up by Friday, which is going to be our first introductory webinar, and we're basically going to do um, like Zooms, webinars um, twice a day to, to support everyone and help them and answer any questions. Um, but, yeah, if you're thinking about it, just go for it. Like we said, there's no... You know, there's no rules that you have to do the entire eight days. You might just want to do three or four. But if you are, you know, a bit bit worried about it, just go for it, man. I was worried. <laughs> I just thought there's no way I'm going to get five days, and I did 19. So it's not as bad as yeah. you think. So um, good clean out for your body, good cleanse, reset, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, go below and sign up. Yeah. Yeah, and, I mean, it's just a cool um, idea that, like, I don't think anyone else has done before to do this as a community experience. So, Basically, um, and this is all the information. So basically anyone can sign up. There's no limitations to it. It's all by donation, meaning you can put in you can put in zero dollars or fifty dollars or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's all by donation. All that money's going into our kitty to try to start to afford this um stadium gig. <laughs> A stadium. <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys are gonna be sick of hearing this in the next 24 months. But anyway, um so basically the si situation right now is that on Friday night. At 5 p.m. Queensland time, which is 6 p.m. New South Wales time, which is 3 p.m. Perth time. And I don't even know what other time zones are out there in the rest of the world. It's confusing enough here in Australia. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so basically 5 o'clock um, Queensland time, 6 o'clock New South Wales on Friday is the start. So Friday is will be our first community um, Zoom meeting and we will invite everyone to come on board with us and we'll just talk it through and get everyone psyched and prepared and, you know, ease everyone's worries and also, like, you know, fully congratulate and affirm your decision to be doing something like this. Eight days is pretty scary for most people and, you know, like there's a few things going on here. One is obviously you're fasting your body. So you're giving your body the very first time, probably for the majority of you ever of a deep clean out. And the way that this works with the body, like as you stop using your digestive system and stop putting food in, it can stop using all of its energy to focus on digesting things and actually start to work through your system. And it does this in a beautiful way. First of all, it will eat through all of your um, rotting and diseased um, you know, tumors, um, issues, cancers, the things that are poisonous to your body, it'll start to clear out those. It will then start to work on your fat resources. And with that, your emotional, um, traumas yeah. that have been stored in your fat. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, um, I, and I'll have a lot to talk about my experience there. Cam, of course, doesn't have trauma, so he just like whatever. Um, <laughs> but I have much to share on that. Um, and then after after all of that is done and dusted, and we won't get to the end of that with an eight-day fast, but it will be a really good start for everyone. And of course, if you're if you get to eight days, you might continue on the journey and keep going, in which case Campbell and I will adapt the course to keep going with you guys as you're going. Like 
Um, I, I haven't told him that, but that's the plan. I've seen you it, guys yeah. plan to go to 19 <laughs> days? <laughs> if you can get to 19 days, we're going to be there right beside you. So the point of the, the Zoom meetings in the evening is just to basically keep affirming the decision, keep supporting you, keep talking it out. If you have any weird things happening or any worries or stresses, you can talk about it and we can talk it, talk it through and just be there on that capacity. I know this time when I fasted, I got quite, um, quite sick because I had actually done a, a parasite cleanse beforehand for three weeks and I probably had wiped out my gut biome. And then I was, um, it was actually making me vomit quite a lot, um, bile which I've never experienced before. So if I was in that moment by myself, I would have been quite stressed out about it because I'd never mm. had that experience and I didn't know how to respond to it. Um, so if stuff like that happens, then, you know, we're going to be here to help you, you know, through that process and mm. make sure everyone's comfortable and happy. Yeah, yeah. And all the uh, Zooms will be recorded. We started a WhatsApp group, which you'll all be put into. So, you know, there will be somewhere you can go and talk, you know, at any time there'll be the replays. So, you know, if you're in America, I guess that means that our morning Zoom is probably going to be your evening. So it'll hopefully work out for everyone. Hopefully it won't be in the middle of the night, but there will be support. Um, mainly, you know, I've only done one, one fast, but Kelly's done, what have you done, 10 or something? I think she's done 40 I've done days. So, so she's I've the I've done master. it every, oh, that's right, I'm the mastermind. The master. um, every two Every two years since I was about 24. And mm. I'll tell you about my first experience fasting and why it even started and, and um, how it's like impacted my system over the last, you know, two decades. So we've got lots to talk about and lots of stories to share. And of course, obviously, one of the main um, focuses is to like start to get on top of um, parasites and um, how they're impacting us and if they're impacting you and just starting to look at a deep dive more on the parasites. Um, also, we're going to invite some special guests to the evening sessions. So we've already signed up Maggie Palmer to come and um, talk to you. She was really great when we were doing ours. It's just really nice to have that energy work happening. And um, <clears throat> so yep. she's going to be available to chat uh, maybe a couple of nights during the fast. And you can, again, go a bit deeper um, on your concerns but overall, it's just to basically keep you guys together and knowing that you're on the path as a community. Um, so, yeah, so I don't know if the evening and the morning sessions will be utilized or required. I know for myself, um, getting up and doing a Zoom or any form of meeting at 8 a.m. in the morning is not what I normally want to do when I'm fasting. Predominantly, you just want to sleep as long I'm as possible. A, it, yeah, it takes the day, it makes the day go quicker. So you get to your next day um, and be like, you start to go through some detoxing symptoms and, you know, some, just some, you know, some stuff coming up in your system, which case you might want to rest a bit more. So the the morning sessions we're unsure about, and if they're not being utilized, we will just stick with the evenings, yeah. but the evenings now that's, that's important. And so on Friday night, we're going to set the tone. We're going to talk it all through Friday is your last meal. Friday is the last meal. So on last the Zoom supper. on Friday night, the last supper. So on the Friday night, you feel free to eat your dinner with us, your last meal. Um, you can, can be prepping for this by today if you wanted to. You could start to decrease your um, sugary intake, decrease your um, caffeine intake, decrease your you know heavy food intake Eat and start gluten. to lighten up yep. if you want. I never do. Click, Campbell and I did it. We were just like, woohoo, our last meal. Like, let's yeah, the, out, man. What's yeah, up? Yeah, man, we were eating size. chocolate and lollies <laughs> and all types of stuff, man. Yeah, all sort of shit we never, <laughs> ever eat anyway. We just decided to splurge. Um, so if, you, if you're more of that ilk, then spend the Friday eating everything you think that you're going to, like, crave during the week. Um, of course, with, my, with our fasting... Um, you know, like on these eight days, you would probably, and it's up to you, of course, because this is all of your sovereign choosing how you want to like create this experience. But I give up caffeine. I give up tea. I give up everything. Basically, I go cold turkey on tobacco, marijuana, tea, all of the ailments, all the vices oh, no. and just plot on through. And by day three, it's not traumatic. By day three, honestly, all of those vices are out of your system and your digestive system shut down and you're not hungry and you're not craving things. And yeah, so there's, no. but it's up to you. You don't yeah. have to do that. 
Yeah, and that, that was the biggest thing for me is and you could I thought I'd be really, really, really hungry, but but not at all, man. Like not at all until the third week did I start getting like little hunger pangs. It was so it's not as scary as you want. Um and also obviously if you're gonna do it, um, you know, if you're in a house, let everyone know, try and create a bit of a space for yourself so that you're not so yeah, you know, in society, not so around food, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, if you're the the cook of the house, try and get out of that for a week, get someone else to do it. Yep. Um, but, yeah, just try and create a bit of a space where you can, yeah, you know, do the fast, focus on yourself um, and basically be out of society for the seven or eight days or 19 if you're going to go 19. You can yeah. even try and beat us. You can go 21 and, and beat us if you really want to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, ultimately, um, it is the most optimal version is that you're in a retreat space by yourself. That's the most optimal version. Yeah. But, you know, not everyone has that luxury. Most people don't. So if you are still like the main feeder of the house, if you've got kids you're dealing with, all that stuff that still has to go on around you, then, yes, being able to sort of off that to your partner if possible, to take care of and just avoiding those that just a week of not being around it would help. I mean, but having said that, I have done fasting and still been the main cook and cook for other people um, while I've been fasting. But, you know, I'm a stubborn bastard like that. So it depends how, how stubborn you are in your disposition. Mm. <laughs> and, and that's so, one of the big <laughs> things, man. You've got to be you got to be stubborn. You just got to have that yeah. mindset that you're going for something and you know, yep. whatever comes up, you're just going to be stronger than it and, and a stubborn bastard. Yep. And shut the fuck up body. Like this is a time to take sovereignty over your body and to command it. Like we live in a reality now where our bodies tends to command our reality, but it needs to be yep. the other way around. So fasting is a part of that process where you're, you're just like, I don't care if you're telling me you're hungry. I don't care if you, you want this. I don't care if you don't want to do this. I care i'm i'm commanding you i'm the the commander of this vehicle yep. and we are going to do what i say for the next eight days and that sort of disposition is definitely required during the fasting process so yeah man campbell to be commander of the ship what we're going to those serpents sorry what we're going to do so basically um campbell will put this up today which gives everyone another two days to sign up by um by lunchtime on Friday, I'm going to send out an email to everyone who signed up. So even if you're just thinking about it and unsure, sign up. I'm going to send out an email on Friday at lunchtime. Within that email will be a Zoom link for the evening session, a WhatsApp group to join, and basically um, a, a little calendar of schedule of what is going to happen over the next eight to nine days. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's happening at lunchtime on Friday. So our first session is Friday evening and Campbell and I will be there in the Zoom to welcome you into it. So well done, everyone, to our first community water fast. All right, I am pumped. All Who right. knows yeah, what's going to happen? Let's do it. Let's clean out all the crap, um, you know, and get ready, right? It's, it's a good time. There's a lot going on in the world. It's time to sort of, you know, get rid of all the crap. It'll, it'll clear your mind as well. That's another thing that happens is you get rid of the mind fog. Um, and, you know, we're almost, I was just thinking before, man, we're like two and a half months until 2025. So it's a good start to, you know, clean yourself out for 2025, you know. Yeah. So yeah. And, you know, I would I would go from the water fast, which is a good detox for a week, into potentially a deeper parasite fast and then into a heavy metal fast and then to rebuilding your gut biome. So there's there's some stages you can choose to enter. But, yeah, I mean, as Campbell said, it's a really good time to do it. And, you know, obviously, hello, look at what's going on in the in the realm at the moment, like the weather manipulation, the, you oh, know, this God. whole taking out of America and Mexico. It's fucked up to the max. We've seen it here in Australia over yeah. the last couple of years. You know, this yeah, yeah. like these targeted attacks using the weather to clear out areas of resources that the government want and need. It's disastrous and traumatic. And I was just even thinking, Campbell, I mean, I've been quite obsessed watching it. And mm -hmm. um, our AR heart goes out to all of our American um, community out there. We are fully conscious and aware. And 
if there's anything Tartara Australia can do to support anyone's needs out there, please get in contact. We are standing beside you. We yeah. know what's going on. Let us know, man. I was there in March. I literally drove down the Smoky Mountains to, from North Carolina to Georgia. So mm. the whole place that is now destroyed, man. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I just it's just shocking, man. It was such a beautiful place, you know, like lakes up in the mountains, all these little towns everywhere. And unfortunately, they were sitting on top of resources, right, that the system want. And, I mean, we can't say too much, but, yeah, you know, we're thinking of everyone over there and, and let us know if there's anything we can do to help support all that kind of stuff. Um it's I mean it's really up. it's really yeah and it's just like it's so annoying that we live in this realm where this <laughs> um yeah. uh, you know one of the things that we were joking about the last podcast that didn't work was <laughs> how you know we spend all of our time um dissing this whole agenda around transgenderism and pronouns and yet here in the truth community we were the beginners of the whole pronoun debacle because how much do we say they and them? Hey, them. <laughs> like, them, they, like the, these unknown um, parasitic entities that make these um, inhumane decisions to um, create technology that can control and create weather and point it at certain places and have it land there specifically and use it to remove the population from areas that they have other plans for. They have other plans for. They, them. Yeah. Yes. They, I mean, them. So it's just evil what's going on. I mean, if, if you're ever in, yeah. in doubt about who's, you know, in control and what kind of morals and what kind of beings they are, well, I think it's, it's pretty much been laid out on the table, right? They're showing us, Straight up, I mean, I heard something this morning, you know, with this $750 that people can claim that I, I, I don't know if it's real, but I, I saw this video that in the small print, if you claim that, that you then have to pay it back. And if you don't, the government can take your house for 750 bucks. <laughs> oh my God. It's, yep. it's, it's just insane what's going out there, um, what's going on out there. It's, um, I know, and I mean that, but that sort of happened with the um, in Australia as well, and the and the vaccine with the like payout for that, and I mean it's interesting with Australia's experience because obviously a couple of years of it we've had pointed weather events that have knocked out entire um, areas, and you know, and and each time, and we've seen this personally, um, the the army, the 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 SES, the support networks were all um, blocked from participating or helping in any way. And, in fact, they spent their time blocking others from others. helping. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, exactly. like how fucked is that? Like so inhumane. And I've seen the same thing going on with the, with the states right now. You know, the humanity is being blocked from assisting their neighbours by the very organisations that are meant to protect and support in these disaster moments. In Australia, it's called the SES, the um, Emergency Services, but they would they turned away about eight hundred volunteers in our area because they didn't have the jab. I mean, crazy, insane. And then what's happened to Lismore, which got hit pretty bad, is you know all the little businesses, all the mum and dad businesses got wiped out. Um, they they didn't have insurance because you can't insure there for flooding, and within a couple of months. All the big multinationals were back up and running, brand new stores, and all the little shops, all the the soul right yeah. of Lismore was just gone. It's just yeah gone. Yeah, that's it's really really yeah. sad, and they're yeah. trying it. And same same story, right? But they're trying it everywhere. And it's really interesting because, like, we're looking at sort of the the artificial inversion of the weather, the use of weather as a military weapon. And then we're looking at sort of what we're naturally moving towards from an earth perspective with um, a polar shift potentially and the release of gases and plasma from our realms and how that's impacting the weather. And it's all sort of co colliding into like a, sh a shit storm basically. And um, it took Campbell and I on an interesting journey last conversation on this topic. I'll just yes. reintroduce the topic, Campbell, and we can start from there. Can, yeah, so yeah. <clears throat> one sure. thing, 
Sorry, you go. What was that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, one one thing we were, yeah, I, there's a bit of a, by the way, there's a bit of a lag again. Okay. So if I'm talking over you, that's why. Campbell and I are very good at not talking over each other, but if it does happen, it's the lag. Um, all right, so the setup. So basically we were talking about time and we were having this really interesting conversation about um, the last, um, say, four or five years yeah, and man. how Campbell and I, al along with thousands and thousands of other people, have engaged our focus in recategorizing, re-coordinating, reorganizing, um, putting into new timelines, removing dates, removing thousands of years, reinserting things, like rebuilding the timeline. I mean, basically have reorganized in essence history mm. yeah, yeah, and yeah. like that conversation but yeah yeah sorry you go <laughs> yeah yeah um and we were talking about is you know what is the past you know is it is it retrospective mm. because we have this conception that the future you know is potential right it hasn't been created yet and we're going into it but is the past the same you know are we in the middle and we can affect both right the past and the future with what we do in the now and you know we, we kind of seem to have seen this right with the tartarian research and you know the question's been put up you know, many times is where did all this info come from you know we started looking into this and, and as we got onto different ideas the evidence would appear it was really crazy so you know what's going on are we creating that like are we literally changing the past as we yeah. go forward because like Kelly said, we've restructured our our view of history completely. It's completely different to what we thought ten years ago, and definitely to what we were taught. Um, so, are we changing that? Like, how you know, is this um, a Taurus? Right, we're in the middle, in the now, and you know, the Taurus is going to the future and the past. Like, are we affecting the whole the whole thing? How does this work? Yeah, I mean, I love that that notion because you know we we all saw if you were in the Tartarian um, like consciousness early on, like, and you started and you you know Campbell came to it with the star forts and and then suddenly like everywhere he looked there were star forts and you know some of us came to it with the sort of the amazing gigantic structures that are our cities and then everywhere you look there's like suddenly these gigantic city structures and and then the the whole thing with the orphans and then you know this where are the population then all this content about orphans came out and all this content about the cabbage patch babies and every time we started to ask new questions it became like we got this surge of input online, like a surge of evidence, photos, like articles, movies, things starting to like pile into those new questions. Mm. And then it correlated with this word reset, Campbell. And that's sort of like when it all just like, yeah, was, so let's talk about that. That yes. was a crazy time, man. Like th that was, gosh, probably four years ago and we were just, you know, it was t late 2019 and we were throwing around, you know, resets. Have there been resets in the past? You know, that, that word suddenly came up. And then within a couple of months, we had old Klaus out there telling us we were in a reset and we are going into one. It was really, really strange that we were talking about these things. Another yeah. one I remember is the red bricks. Like we were like looking at these buildings and we're like, and I'm, we're like is everything red brick? Because, you know, most of them have got a covering on them, mm. right, at the side. And we're like, what's going on here? Is everything? And then we just started getting all these pictures of, you know, big buildings with the corners knocked off and it's red brick. And then suddenly it, we realised everything's red brick. Like, how did this happen? Like, so it's really yeah. interesting the way it's gone along that we get these ideas. We start looking into it, you know, the um, our little collective consciousness looking into this all sort of focuses in on something and then the evidence appears. So uh, the question is, yeah, where and that are we really, creating that? Yeah. Yes. So, like, there's two places to look for that. Is our consciousness in the reorganizing and recategorizing of history? And, and, like, we've done it now extensively, right? Like, it's just not been, like, targeted in one area. I mean, we've it's gone through, like, 
maps and it's gone through and books and it's gone through the art world and it's gone through the historical narrative and it's it's led everyone to the flat earth and to the shape of the globe so it's gone through the sciences and it it's really just like so and enough people now have come to that consciousness you know you, i i think there'd be very few people within the at least within um the 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 truth community community or we could even say the anti community like that would not have now um come across and understood tartaria right mm. and that and, and understanding tartaria has led us to you know this notion that history is not what we thought it was now so the question is you know, is our collective consciousness on that focus in our focusing our present moment on our past and reshuffling and recategorizing our past? Is it then generating the future where new ev evidence is coming forward to match our new reorganizing of the past? In which case, if that's the case, then everything we looked at in the last four years is playing out now in our current moment. So we're living it. So you think about what we what we actually looked at. We looked at resets. That was big. A total. We looked at the collapse of the Tartarian society and what that what disaster that was. Was it the you know the mud flood? Was it water? Was it you know was it an invasion? Like what was it that caused this culture, this society to collapse from yeah. what we would appear to be beauty and reverence and well-being and thriving and all that stuff free energy you know beautiful buildings no bathrooms all that stuff into um this current reality that we've been experiencing since then which has been shitter and more demonic and more broken and more crap and more anti-life in every way anti-life basically destroy life destroy life in every way control and destroy yeah. but We've been living four years of this consciousness and a big part of that consciousness has been a reset, Campbell. So inevitably, have we created it? Exactly. Are we now living in what we've created, which is massive? Mm. And all the stuff, you know, like what's going on in, in America, I mean, what's the end result going to be is a, a massive mud flood, right? Like there's going to be buried buildings everywhere. So it's kind of across the board. All these, all these ideas that we that we were throwing around, they, they seem to be coming back, right? And we're actually living through them, which is, you know, it, it's very interesting. You know, I believe everything is energy, and that we literally create our reality through what we think. And is that what's going on here? You know, have we sort of brought this mm. into our present reality because we've been putting all this focus on? you know, resets and mud floods. And now what's going on? We're living through resets and mud floods, right? And and destruction and and what looks like another fall of civilization, right? That, that's that's what's going on yes. at the moment. Mm. At the same time, through Tartaria's study for the last four years, we saw magnificent things emerge. We saw things emerge from that. So from this landscape, suddenly we were privy to thousands of castles all around the world, which we kind of vaguely knew existed, but not to the extent that they are in existence. Like, so these beautiful fairy tales started to emerge into our reality. The mm. giant trees started to emerge. Our mountains turned into giant trees. You know, our our space turned into the ocean. Our realm turned flat. Our, uh, <laughs> our our the mythical beasts of our fairy tales and legends and scribbles and doodles on maps became real suddenly and tangible. And like this whole new fantastical realm opened up and emerged with evidence all around us. So that emergence of better times, of higher quality um creativity and beauty and harmony emerged mm. Campbell so if we're living now in what we created then those things are also emerging around us which is what we are looking at as the great awakening right exactly as the pole shift the, po the shift from positive to negative. yeah yeah are we literally breaking down the the false reality that we've been made to believe is real you know, because, you know, like Kelly said, like, you know, 10 years ago, we all thought we were living on a globe spinning through space. Now we, we know it's flat. We we thought that history was one thing. Now we, we know it's something completely different. You know, all these yeah. like mud floods and resets and blah, 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 um, cyclical resets too. 
the whole way that time moves, it, it's all, you know, been, been overridden by the new information we've gotten. And as we've done that, our reality seems to be changing. I mean, it's been a lot of changes so in the last four years, man, so dramatically, right? And then, of course, we have Mandela effect as well. Is that yes, another yes. proof that we are literally changing the past as we go forward with different thoughts and intentions? Yes. I mean, the Mandela effect has been a, a, such an interesting paradigm. Like, but how much would it relate to us? I mean, if you think about um, collectively that there's millions of people focusing on this stuff. I mean, it's like I'm I'm, I'm not on TikTok, but I know. And it's interesting with TikTok that it's been like fully poised to be banned from America, but actually so much amazing content gets put onto TikTok. Yeah. So much content around these topics that are done really friggin' well via TikTok. So are they banning it to support our health? Never. They would never do that. Are they banning it because it's supporting our health? Yes. That's why they would always do that. So, like, my point is that if we're looking at, like, millions and millions of people now redefining, reorganizing, recategorizing history, the shape of their realm, the sciences, the mass, the quantums, the the agendas, um, looking at who owns all of this, the, following the money, follow all of the scandals and all of the rabbit holes, if we've got millions and millions of people focusing on that for the last couple of years, and when we were in the, most of our community, I'd say, were in the, way on the front line 20 years ago where you just were considered crazy um (laughs) but now we've got literally and like if we're to believe that um energy and consciousness creates the nature of reality the more energy put onto a topic the more consciousness will create the reality and suddenly literally millions and millions of people have their consciousness and their energy on these topics and are actually doing research so then therefore our past or our past in analyzing our past is now our experience of our present which is now so as Campbell and I move through our conversations with our podcast whatever we talk about is inevitably if everyone if enough people agree going to end up being our future and um you know 10 years ago Campbell did you have any focus on 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 parasites any (laughs) focus any focus on the on um ai taking over or or um heavy metals in our bodies or um even like egypt you know like had you seriously put any attention on egypt and what that truly was and where it came from you know these are all like Mm. so yeah i mean it's just interesting to see what comes Mm. first Mm. yeah i mean we've learned the mandala effect the mandala effect like it's it's true man like the world it's a different place like i mean yeah it just is it's a different world we're in and how does that happen and you know we've had all this talk of you know different timelines and converging timelines and so people are on to the fact that there's something weird going on with our reality right the timelines don't seem linear which they're not right but yeah that's yeah, we were yeah. Taught that history is a line right it's not it's it seems to be circles spirals and things like this so yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting. Are we all collectively proving to ourselves that it is our thoughts that create reality? Because that's pretty much what we've seen, right? And, and yep. I've kind of been harping a bit, you know, recently, like this is why it's so important to not, to not focus on the bad stuff that's going on, to take that on as information, but then to use it to go forward and create something better. Um, not to get stuck, because if we get stuck in these deep rabbit holes and and all the attention and focus is going on it, it brings it more real, right? And um, when I say that, I don't mean about the information and the knowledge coming out. I mean, we can put ourselves in the position where we're directly affected by this bad stuff. And that's what we we don't want to do, right? But we can take that information and go, well, this is happening and, and we can bring it to light. But it, if you, if we hyper focus on product on you know on different subjects, we can literally bring them into our lives. So that's that's one thing that I've been saying. Like I think it's we can know stuff. We can go, yep, yeah, this is happening. You know, they're doing whatever. You know, the diddler. You know, <laughs> all that kind of stuff is going on. Yes, but we don't have to go down that rabbit hole and get emotionally attached to it because. In the end, we we can't go in and, and by ourselves fix that, right? But we can bring it to the attention of the world 
which will bring it out, which will then cause change. Well, this is the way I see it anyway. I can see Kelly there going, well, oh, I don't know about that. No, 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 no. I, I, mean, I don't totally agree. But it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because when you delve into history like we have, you're kind of impartial to it. It's not, I mean, by the notion of the word history, it's already in your past. That That's that's the power of fucking words, you know? Like we say the word history and automatically everyone assumes that's part of your past. You don't have to worry about that. Like you can go and exp examine it, look at it. Like, yes, there's a massive disaster, cyclic disasters that have apocalyzed the earth and the, all the humans, but you're not emotionally involved in it because it's history. It's got the word history attached. But when we look at and the Mandela effect in the middle of this is fascinating. I would say it is an absolute correlation with the Mandela effect. As we started to rearrange, reorganize, recoordinate, recategorize history as a global collective, as we started to do that, the Mandela effect, this was like started to become more and more and more and more and more because it is, it appears that the consciousness that was freely roaming and for most people it was just the funnest thing ever so people were in like glee as we said in our very first show tartaria was fantastic because you could physically interact with it you could go and see it you could go to the cities you could be amazed at seeing the buildings for the first time through these lens you could touch it you could punch it you could lick it if you wanted like it was tangible whereas so many of what we talk about in the truth community is lofty and abstract and you know you can't you can't get it's 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 pronouns it's theys it's thems it's like <laughs> there's nothing <laughs> tangible to it but tartaria <laughs> became tangible and as that became tangible, it became a very fun, gleeful ride for so many people as they're just amazed at how the world could reorganize itself and re-emerge through these lens, just like you see on the movies like Inception, where the world is get or, or um the one where they change the cityscape at night. Uh, dark, 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 city. dark something. I can't remember the dark city. Yeah, Dark City, like we, it, that's what Tartaria felt like to me, and I think many. And because it stayed in that light crazy joyful can't believe this is can't believe this energy like our our response to it triggered in essence what we would call the mandala effect because it literally set up a completely uncontrolled un um like the 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 they's thems didn't control it couldn't control it couldn't stop it from happening it was a natural thing and then we started to see the correlation so as we started to look at say the reset and the missing population and then the reintroduction of orphans at the same time in our current reality suddenly everyone's focuses on the missing children the human trafficking the in, tunnels under the world point. like yeah, they yeah, correlated yeah. yeah yeah totally so what we were examining Tartaria re-emerged in our current reality and there's so many examples like that mm. yes yeah, so it begs a question does time even exist you know, no, like, I can't. And this is the thing, right? Like what it's looking like is like I said before, we always see the future as just potential, right? It hasn't happened. Maybe we need to look at the past like that. Maybe the past is potential. It hasn't happened. We're creating it as we go forward, because all there is is now. You know, we've, we've been told this time very smart. Exist. All there very is very smart. Mm. Yep. So super smart. That's right. So if we take language out of it and take these big stucky words like history out of the mix. And know that as we examine the past, it's it's just pure potential. Mm. I mean, that's a massive mind shift. It's pure potential. So as we collectively all agree on a new version of the past, it's pure potential. It has to then become our we current reality into our future, which is the basis of, say, all the modalities like holographics, holographic kinetics, you know, where they look um, yeah. They look into the, not to deal with the trauma in the current moment, they go back into the past of the trauma through all timelines who ever existed, nail the original um, trauma, remove it, clear it, heal it, and then all time forward future change is, um, as a result as if it never had occurred in the first place. That's not yeah. a linear <clears throat> timeline. That's pure it's potential in all directions. T totally, man, because you think about it, if you have some trauma and it gets, you know, released, how does that change your whole perception? It, it doesn't make a lot of sense when you think about it, but if you think, well, it goes back to, to the day dot, right, and changes it when it happens, so it never happens. So you've literally then lived your whole life again up to this point without it, that would change you instantly, right? That would make you a different person. Mm -hmm. So it looks like that's what's happening. <clears throat> it's not like we're removing, <clears throat> excuse me, 
it's not like we're removing something from the now and that somehow affects everything. It's like we're literally going back in time, if time exists, right, changing that belief system, and then that means that you've then lived your whole life up until now without that belief system, so you are a different person. Yep, and it really it comes down to removing language. That is truly, it's words that bind us. If you see, think of reality as anything tangible, the building blocks mm. are words. That's why yeah. everyone goes on about spells, words being smells, words being powerful. Yeah, and sure, yeah. which led Campbell and I to the concept of what is your word? What's and we're going to be going word? through this with the water fasting community. Yes. What's your word? And that's about um, having an updated living moral code because your word should be um, taken as your commitment, your promise, your truth. If you give your word to someone, it holds weight. So when, and that's been lost so dramatically because yeah. of religion, because everyone's just given over their moral code to some queasy, quasi lofty abstract religious code they mildly live their lives bar but have never truly decided on yep. ever yep. and we'll get back mm -hmm. into that or, yep. or science or the second. news um any of this stuff but yeah that's what we're talking about is people used to have a word people used to live by their word handshakes used to mean something they don't anymore because now you know religion science the news they're all definites they tell you what to think. They're not asking questions or leaving it up to you or anything that they're telling you. They're defining things. So words are spells, especially words like past, present, and future, because that puts and things time. in, in yep. a certain place in our mind. And we, we think categorizes are behind us. These things are now, these things haven't happened yet, but yep. it's all one. And the thing is like with, manifesting right everyone thinks it's about bringing stuff towards them where the truth is everything's actually already inside you so it's reversed again manifesting is about bringing stuff out of you so you can experience it in the outside yeah. world mm. brilliant yeah absolutely so if we look at removing the building blocks of our reality which is words um defining things definitions definites definition and just, definites yeah, definite, as campbell yeah. said yeah like and you you remove those building blocks suddenly um what is our process with organizing and recategorizing our past and removing the word past we're going to see that um our current reality now and our tomorrow reality our future reality is just basically one and the same thing and it's out, it's uncontrolled. It's mm. uncontrollable because once you turn from the um, the mechanisms in our reality that do put in that definite words, those definite languages, like that's why we see those hilarious clips on the news where like a hundred news readers are just repeating yeah. the same script. Same, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. the same script. It's all words, right? It's just a definite, it's all words. It's like repeating, 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 repeating. With Tartaria... We naturally and organically, without any leadership or direction or um, coveted process, started to remove the language and remove the words. And we started to bring in new language. Like how many new, like Tartaria, who had heard of that 10 years ago? Yeah. Um, you know, the, the names Resets. were the blood. No one, Star Forts, yep, Resets. Star Fort. yep, you know, Star Cities, you know, like... Um... Uh, like the illusion, what's it called? Like reality is an illusion. This whole concept of uh, us living actually in a matrix and looking into that is a, a pretty new concept as well, right? Yep, absolutely. So, I mean, and it's been a delightful ride. So, the ultimate like reality that we're living now is the reality that we've just recategorized and mm -hmm. re, um, re, re languaged and yeah. reconfirmed and yeah. like and so it's inevitable basically yeah. you guys we've written our pr present moment it's inevitable what yeah. we are going to go through is essentially what we have just recategorized and reordered and re-inputted into our reality yeah. which will yeah. be a reset totally well, well we are we're resetting our, our our thought process you know our our version of reality and as we reset it 
in the present, it seems to be changing the past and the future, right? Um, we're definitely going into a different future than, you know, than we thought we would be in 2019, you know, all this stuff. And, uh, you know, we've been told this is the apocalypse, right, which is the unveiling, which definitely seems to be happening, right? We're starting to see all these, yeah, yeah, yeah. these government agencies mm-hmm. and things for what they really are. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, w- what is time, right? Are we literally, I mean, this is how I'm seeing it now, is we're, we're, we're the point of thought and we, and it's just expanding out both ways right so so all there is is now and we get to we get to change the future right? and i mean october as well is all year i've been hearing october it's october 24 october like mm. stuff's going to happen and i mean look what's happened just in in the last couple of weeks you know this whole expose shall we say of of, of the diddler and all his friends and then we've got all this stuff going on in america we've got stuff going on in the middle east I mean, it's just absolutely going crazy i mean everywhere 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 man. it's parallel yeah. because you know we're looking at the falling stars the for the false idols the falling stars and all the way through tataria it all wraps into these these beings that came down to the earth is like this this fallen Cre- these the, you know the the giants you know the fallen angels and nephilim it's all wrapped up into what we've looked at in the last couple of years now we're literally seeing the false idols the falling stars the stars falling like yeah. it's playing out exactly like that mm. yep yeah, and yeah, there's yeah. just countless parallels there's countless it's, it's a good one because all the reset stories well not all of them but a lot of them they talk about the stars falling like they're talking about or we think they are the the stars up there right and yeah, what are we seeing? We're literally seeing the, the the stars that have been put up there for us falling, right? So it's yep. it's a very yep. interesting, yep. very interesting time. But it's yep. empowering, right? It, it it shows us that we literally can and are affecting our reality, and it's unstoppable because once you once you go through this process. It's not like anyone's going to be able to. I mean, it would. I can't even imagine anyone's going to be ever be able to convince me that um, drinking fluorinated water is something that I want to do, <laughs> or, or eating um, genetically modified food is something I want to do, or um, watching television news is something that I'm ever going to want to. Like, I can't. Once you've sort of like seen through it and chosen a different version of reality, which we all have, there's no way anyone can convince me otherwise. Like. It's- I can expand on what I what I've understood, but I could never go backwards. Never. No, no, no. I, I agree, man. What, you know what do they say? Once you see it, you can't deny it. Um, but I mean, I'm, I've actually <laughs> been staying with my parents for a couple of weeks, and my parents yeah, are news right. watchers, man. <laughs> Holy dooly! I, I literally haven't seen the news in like it's got to be decades. I haven't watched TV in. A, a, like even seen it in last at least a decade and my parents have the tv on 24 7 like even when there's no one watching it it's on and it's set to the news channel and then they have radios wherever they are with the news going (laughs) and i walk out and it's just like oh man and the news now like it's not like when when i last saw it like 20 years ago at least they were kind of it sounded like they were telling facts like telling a story that now they're just telling you what to believe it's it's insane you should watch i mean actually don't don't watch it but if if you (laughs) see that you might know what i'm talking about like they they tell you a story in five minutes and then the next half an hour is telling you why you should believe what they're telling you to believe it's insane man and some of the reaction like some of the stuff i've heard i'm just i'm just appalled you know like like seriously appalled this whole stuff going on in the Middle East and people may have heard of, um, you know, the I country putting bombs in all these, you know, terrorism's pages. Yeah, you told and me then, this. Then they yeah, blew, that's just awful. I can't yeah, then they blew up all these people what? and everyone in the West were told, you know, yes, this is awesome. Look, we're, we're killing terrorisms and all this stuff. And, you know, pe- they were cheering it, man. They're like, yeah, we got them, we got them. And I mean, first of all, I'm like, well, that's like unaliving people. That's not good. But then when you look into it, you realize that over 200 other people 
were unalived in that in that event, including women and children, because it's not like they they track these people and they're like, okay, they're alone in their home, let's do it now. They were doing it when they were out in in society, man, when they were shopping. So they're standing there, hey. bombs are going off, and if there's a kid standing next to them, bad luck, kid. You know, you just got unalived as well, and. And people were literally cheering this, like getting that, you know, that stupid yes. look that you, that you see, like when they don't, open the, and they're like, yay, terrorisms are being defeated. I mean, it's, this is how far we've come. They've got people cheering for unaliving people. It, it, it's crazy, man. It's, I, I, I just but don't... then, but, but then, yeah, I mean, but then at the same time, there's like um, millions and millions of us that would find that repulsive and unbelievable and put it down to the they thems that we don't even believe to be human. No. So like, you know, that. it's, it's, it's inhumane war, war and their process. I mean, war is just such a they them it's a they them. <laughs> it's they them action. It is, um, man. It's totally. Yeah. I hate it every time I hear people say, "Oh, you know, humans are such aggressive little animals. No. Oh, humans are so warlike." No, no. what an absolute no. crock of crap. Has anyone ever met anyone who wanted to go and start a war? I mean, no. I haven't. No, but it's no. clearly no. not us. It, this is us being manipulated by the they them's. Fuck yeah. The Rainbow Army. Yeah. To, to go Fuck and. Yeah. and do their bidding, you know, their kids and family. Yeah, and, and religion and the and religion, religion army, the religious. So religion's an interesting one because through the the Tartaria process, like, um, you know, a few people have fallen to Christianity, sadly, um, which still pisses me off. But, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. but for the most part, like you've seen that, Oh, although Tartarian Christianity have all sort of been morphed and warped in, haven't they? But well, we've seen no evidence of religion through the through the Tartarian studies. No, There's no, no evidence don't. of religion no, it's good at point. all. No, no, unless you yeah. think that these buildings were religious, which we've proved. Which they weren't. I've out that they weren't. Um, we do have this tie that's been talked about of the millennial reign. You know, a, a lot of sort of Christians have jumped on, oh, well, Tartaria must have just been the millennial reign. It must have been Jesus. That's why things were so good. Um, you know, but again, that's a theory. We don't have any proof of that, you know, and and, and, th and that to me is a depowering thought. I think it's more empowering to think it, it was us. Look, look at our potential. Look at what we can do. And if we look at that from the perspective of time that we've been talking about, that, that, you know, history is retroactive and whatever we focus on, we actually bring into the retroactive. Present. I like that word. Retroactive. retroactive. That's a good word. Yeah. Man. yeah. Um, so if we if we can see that and say and think that's us, we've done it before, we can do it again. We can bring that into our current experience. But if well, we believe doing it's that. someone else, we didn't have any any say over it. It was Jesus and the saints and that. Well, that kind of leaves us in a very depowered place. And where does it put us? where we are now with religion again telling people how to live their lives and people buying into it i mean at the end of the day religion is just words it's just another word yeah. it's just another word no one on this realm has ever 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 met jesus christ superstar ever it's just a fucking word right yeah. it's a word and that's and why they require faith even, his name wasn't even jesus his name yeah. was joshua that's right like so and he was probably you know anyway but he, either he way existed, it's just a fucking yeah. word it's yeah, just it a word, as and in it, everything in religion is just a word. And we're back to that to that word, word. Like the mm -hmm. Bible literally starts, you know, in the beginning was the word. Yeah. And this is what we've lost, our word. Our word yes. doesn't mean anything anymore. They've stolen it's, our word. It's been so manipulated, exactly. right, that, that the meanings, and this is goes back to the all words are spells, right, but this is how they're manipulating our, our um, perception, is they're changing the word. Right, and and when we believe yeah. a word yeah. means a certain 100%. thing, then then we we manifest that, right? I mean, like on that topic specifically, um, our moral codes should be living documents. This what I will do a whole show on this because it's important. Because most of us, honestly, especially in the Western world, we've got this like phasey Christian code that we'll get kind of given as kids and going through school, you know, which are good, fine things like be kind to people and love people and look after your neighbor and don't steal and cheat and all those things and don't murder. And they're all good. 
But there is, you need to, as a human being, actually write a moral code that's alive and that's yours and that gives you, and it's so important right now. I really feel this because like, if you think about the people in America or Mexico right now who are living through this massive targeted weather event, right? And they're in chaos. So there's thousands of bodies everywhere. There's no power. There's no supplies. You know, everyone's pretty messed up in that way. And they suddenly have to make a million decisions, like really quickly. Like if you're in that situation, which we probably all will experience uh, roundabouts because we've already denoted that we're going to go through a massive um, earth event that brings on a reset, that brings out the new civilization. We've already decided that retroly via our study of history. So it must come about. So in that situation, if you've got like, if you've got this tiny stash of food, you've got your family and then you've got neighbors who also need food, are you going to make a decision to share with that with that neighbor to um, that may be detrimental to what resources you have? Are you going to step in and try to rescue someone when it could put yourself in, could put your family in danger? Like there are literally a million moral decisions you have to make in the years to come. And you've got to make them quickly and powerfully. And to do that, you need to have a living document that is your personal moral code and how you're going to conduct yourself. It will, and you know what happens when you have this sort of document? Your word gains power. Yeah. Your word becomes yeah. powerful again. And you know what that does to you? It makes you a fucking leader. That's what it does. And totally. that's why our words have been stolen so fucking insanely. Mm. Yeah. No one has their moral code anymore. You know, if they've got, if no. they do have one, it, it's been given to them, you know, by the church or by whatever. And that, if it's exactly. not yours, it doesn't mean anything, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, like Kelly said, we're going to be covering this. But, guys, if you're out there, then to start jotting down some ideas. What is your moral code? How do you live? What are your yeah. boundaries? You know, when put in certain situations, how will you react? Because this is what a moral code does. It gives you, you know, a way to act. It tells you who you are. And so when you're in a certain situation, you don't have to think. You know who you are and you, you are going to act as, as your word, right? But when you don't know what you stand for, then you, you've got all these decisions. What do I do? What do I do? And of course, yeah. you know, if you don't stand for, for, for if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. But we yeah. see it so often that all these, you know, Christians and other yeah. religions, no doubt, they, they they proclaim to be Christians, but then when put in certain situations, they don't follow the the, the code, the rules that that they've been given. There's there's no word or or you know, there's no backbone in them because it's not their moral code. That's the problem. Yeah, religion stole the word. You know, in like the back in was the, the word, the days, and then came in religion. The beginning is the word. <laughs> That's right. In the beginning was the word, and the word has been hijacked by yeah. they and them, and it's formed institutions, organizations, laws, regulations, and religion, and it's their words that we are um, forced in some way to live by. But when I was in my Ramtha days, Ramtha would. Uh, finish every drink of water, every single speech, everything he said, it was always be, so be it. That was so the word. What I command shall be, so be it. It was so <laughs> powerful. What I, My word, what I command shall be, so be it. And there's so much power to that. And we have such That's a weak a version of our word now because we've never really sat here and really truly like made decisions. Like part of my moral code is that I will not vote oh, yes. in this system. That's part yeah. of my moral code. I will not vote in this system. I will pay the tw I'll pay the ferryman, but I will not vote because I will not add my voice or my signature or my name to a system that I find appalling. I will not vote. I'm I will not, not support war no matter what. 100% the same. I'm I will not fight in a war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, these are, this is a good way to start. What what will you put up with and what won't you put up with? What is something that you will never support? Because, you know, it, it seems like an, a natural thing. I don't support war. But, I mean, seriously, guys, go out there in community. A lot of people do. Like, look what's going on in the Middle East at the moment. People are like, yay, war. Yeah. It, it's insane. And, and when you think about it, what is war? War is people being manipulated to go and kill other people who don't deserve it. Yep. It, yep. And then glorified. Then glorified. Yep. You know, this is where I the know. heroes come from, right? War heroes. Mm -hmm. What the hell? 
there's no war hero. Yeah. There's just some poor dude who's been yeah. manipulated into a mur- into a into a murderer. Yeah, 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 into a paid assassin. Like yeah. that's how I feel about the Anzacs. They were yeah. literally paid murderers. They yeah. were sent to murder. All soldiers have genocided other people. They're murderers. Like yeah. say it as it is. Soldiers are murderers. UN peace workers are murderers. Just say the truth. Yeah. You know. Um, FEMA, don't glorify you're out that there shit. in FEMA doing what you're doing in America yep. at the moment, you're in the same category. Yep, absolutely, 100%. You know, a part of my living moral code is that I will, to the best of my ability, cause no harm to, to animals, including the micro world of insect and bugs. To the best of my ability, I will take the time and effort to remove that ant from the shower. I will, to the best of my ability, I will um, stop if an animal's in trouble or harm. I will stop any um, trauma being in my, if something comes in my path and someone's hurting an animal, I will stand up. That's part of my moral code. And, you know, is it is it like meaningful that I would care about not killing a bug, that I'll literally take it outside? Is that meaningful? To my moral code, it absolutely is because my word is in support of the animal kingdom and that's a non-negotiable. Mm-hmm. And when I do when I do harm an animal or an insect, mainly an insect, um, and when I harm an insect, like I, I take a moment to, to like, I take a moment on that thing that just happened. I don't just like step on a cockroach and then that's that. I'll actually have a moment with that that experience that I've just had with that cockroach. And it's the same with, you know, the meat eating and that whole process there. So there's like, anyway, that's just part of a living document for me that can be up, updated and upgraded and changed and shifted. Like we recatalyze history. Our yeah. moral code can emerge and evolve. Yeah, but you it's, need it's, one. It's definitely got to be an evolving thing that, that gets reviewed because we're learning so much so quickly, right? Like the moral code that we would have written, you know, five years ago would be completely different to what we're going to do today, right? just because we've learned so much more. Um, so, yeah, get get writing, guys. But we're going to definitely cover this because, you know, it's apart from being something that, that lets us know who we are and how we should act and it makes us strong yep. and it makes us leaders, makes us reliable, it also yep. completely affects what, what we interact with, right, what we're manifesting as far as the past, the present and the future because it we're, we're now determined rather than living our lives being told, from outside sources who we are and what we should believe in we've taken control of the reins and we're like no this is what i am this is who i believe i am this is what i believe and this is how i'm going to act and no one's going to sway me and and isn't that the traits of all these people that that are put up as the great wise people the great changes of of history Mm -hmm. um they all had impeccable moral codes Mm -hmm. that's why they stood up because there was Mm -hmm. a line that they went nah no more 100 percent, and that's that is why we love watching things like lord of the rings or rings of power because there's so many demonstrations of um moral codes of various different groups and cultures having moral codes and making choices with a very strong moral code that's why we like those. And that's why Lord of the Rings or Rings of Power, for example, which is full of war and fucking death and destruction, like it's just constantly fighting and war. Mm. But at the same time, you can see these complexions of how the moral codes are brought into play. Very different from watching an action flick, you know, like how many movies have you watched your lifetime where there's zero moral code? There's just oh no God. moral code. They're just shooting up, ramming any, whatever's going on. There's no morality to it. It's um, and it's. <clears throat> totally. So I was just going to say, I saw a movie. I think it was the Sylvester Stallone one. Um, oh, I can't remember, but he made like a couple of movies and he got all the old super, uh, all the old action heroes into one movie. Uh, yes. Yep. And there was, I was watching this one, there was this one scene and they were in like a, a harbour and they went in and they just started blowing everything up, shooting yeah. everyone, like they're just yeah. unaliving people left, right and centre. Yeah. They've taken the whole thing out and then one of their guys gets shot, not unalive, but just shot, and suddenly it's the biggest thing in the world. Oh, my God, yeah. he's been hurt. Oh, we've got to look. Oh, let's turn around and make sure we wipe the rest of these people out there. And there's no moral code there at all, man. Nothing, but nothing, it's put nothing, up as, nothing. This is this is being a man. This is what a yeah. tough man is. Look at these action heroes. Um, out there just you know destroying people's lives and unaliving them people they don't know they don't have any beef with 
um, you know, th this is what we're told yeah. is a man, right? So and same, same in all the video games. There's no moral code yeah. to the video games. Basically, the idea of a moral code has been removed from you. Totally. Basically, it's been, it's, been, it's been deleted. Totally. You know, your word has been deleted. The the importance of your word deleted. You know, yeah. the destruction of the family unit, like removing the elders, like putting the drug in them, putting the nursing homes. It's, 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 it's all designed to just remove your word. Because at the end of the day, what's the quabble been all about? It's been how powerful is the human being and their consciousness that all of this, all of this reality is just like comes back to this, this, this. It just all comes back. So I like, and just on the on the topic, I just wanted to finish on the topic of looking at um, the last couple of years and what we as a collective consciousness has really, without being forced and delightfully, because it's been fascinating and um, inspiredly gone through, one of those big ones is obviously the reptilian agenda. So that means inevitably reptilians are going to emerge inevitably we will see disclosure on the reptilians because we've been uh, focusing on that for eons of time so inevitably i feel that the reptilian thing will and i think there's going to be a whole like underground civilization disclosure that, and yeah yep. i've been seeing a lot of stuff pop up on that recently which is interesting yep. because, you know we've been talking about it and suddenly it's popping into my reality right who yeah yeah but yeah. it's true, man. All these old stories and all this, you know, reptilian stuff and underground civilizations, it's it's all popping out that the this world that, that we were told is, is completely fake, right? Yeah. And this is how they do it, right? You can't go in and and change the perception of someone who has a moral code, who knows who they are and what they stand for. First, they have to take away the word, right? They have to diminish all that so that no one knows what they stand for and then they put in their moral code on top, which is the opposite to what we should be doing. It's things like to support your country and be a true patriot, go out and murder people. I know. I mean, no one in authority, no one in uniform, no one in authority has any reverence from me whatsoever. No. I, I have no sense of them being um, moral guardians. I have no sense of them being um, good human beings. I have no sense of their intellect. I have no sense of their wisdom. I simply would have zero reverence for the, I would put them lower than most, those in uniforms. So mm -hmm. like, so like once again, our my word has overridden their word by far. And most of the people in the truth community would say exactly the same. Their individual words are way more powerful than authority right now. So, yeah, I mean, what else from our our, his, our look at history and recategorizing is now playing out in our reality, Campbell? Like how about the like the whole look at the Mount Maru and the middle of the earth and the true North Pole and what's like taking place now within our weather systems and the and this flip from gravity to magnetism. I mean, and like that was a big flip in understanding, you mm -hmm. know, so I mean, the flip from dinosaurs to dragons, the flip from um, nuclear bombs not existing, nuclear energy not existing, yeah. like the, the flip from um, Germany and the um, and the yeah, Holocaust. Yeah, yeah, what went on, yeah. What really went on, like all of these constructs that they have created around us have broken apart. So they've got no control, like we're out of control. So when we talked about being the freest people at the bottom of the pyramid, literally we are like out of control right and now. That's like, interesting, isn't it? Like out of control why are we out of control because we're not controlling ourselves we're, because we don't have a moral code or a word to, to give us those boundaries so we're just literally going but down we're out the of their control yeah we're under their control but no we're out of their control i'm saying our community's out of their I, control yes, yes because we've dropped any reverence for anything they've ever said about anything yeah, ever yeah yeah at this point for sure man yeah. like yeah yeah so we're now redefining you know, the reality that we want rather than, than being told it's a static thing, it is this way, this is what you believe, blah, blah, blah. We're like, we're questioning it, right? We're like, well, is... really? Prove it, you know? Because yep. all, they, all they seem to prove is is that we're right, right? <laughs> they just prove themselves to be these despicable yeah. things, man. That's all that we get these days, which proves us more correct. And, I mean... 
I, I like the so. So are we yeah, making yeah. them more despicable? Are we the ones that are turning them even well, grosser and even more outwardly, disgustingly demonic and more blood hungry and more desperate and more unmoral? Like we're I, the ones generating that because we've we've decided. Yeah, that's well, what you are. Where well, I think that we're more exposing them. We're seeing them. Yeah. Like I think it's always been there, but it just hasn't been in our face. So this is to me what the apocalypse is is We've magnified it. is we're seeing what's always been going on. It's always been there, but now it's in our face. Right? And that's because of us. That's because and of what us. I'm saying, we've done up- that. Yeah, we're like asking, are these people really evil? Are they doing this stuff to kids? Are yeah. they animals? Blah, blah, blah. And we're getting the proof. Yes, yes, they are. Yeah. But there's other people around who are sitting in front of the telly who don't see that. Yeah. Because they've still been given the word from someone else. I don't know many of those people anymore. I guess I, they, I, again, they, they would be the older they, generation. They, yeah, well, the older generation. My, like my parents, man. I, I haven't been around this energy, this information for decades like literally like all of us right we put a concerted effort into not being around it and one thing that's been happening is i've i've, I've been tired I, I don't it's like draining literally sucking my energy to the point where i'm tired getting through the day and i'm having to have like an afternoon nap and stuff it's oh uh, he's because he's he's becoming a retiree <laughs> living with his parents I'm, I'm moving into the old people's energy there yeah it's all very comfortable you know the hot water the lack of fresh air the nice double bed the clean yeah. rooms the mum cooking the uh, like uh, gentle drone of the news going on 24/7 like it puts drive. you into retirement it retires you, Campbell. You're going to have to get out of there soon. <laughs> I've got to get out, man. I've, I've, I've got to, what, got to get back to, to Mulaney. You're already retiring. Untire. I need to untire. Yep. I mean, it's interesting the word tire is in the actual word. Tire. <laughs> right? You, you work 40 years, you get tired every week, and then at the end you get to retire. Awesome. Yeah, Permanently. <laughs> out to pasture or into the drugs so <laughs> not even the fun drugs so um it's like because i guess the purpose of what we want to really say today is that all of your work studying tartara in the last four years has literally changed everything in our reality now beyond a shadow of a doubt and the beautiful way that reality works and uh, this is an abraham abraham hicks is that she would say um, for every contrasting expression that you've um, rendezvoused with, you would send a, a new rocket of desire. So this is this is more energetically how I think um, time, true time is. I don't like this, li- get rid of the linear time with its words and just put it into true time. For me, when I come up, say when we've deep dived in all these topics and we've come up against um you know, the lies, for example, how many lies that they've, they, that there is a they to start with. There is a they that's come in and that there's a parasitic energy and there's a lot of lies and deception. Instantly, I um, shoot off in me a rocket of desire born, born from that contrast. And that rocket of desire is saying no more fucking lies. I want all the lies gone. I want to live in a world where there's truth. And there's accountability and authenticity and um, transparency. I want a reality without the deception. And millions of us have by default shot off those rockets of desire via the contrast. So just by delving into into history and recategorizing at the same time, we've shot off all these new rockets of desire, which are now aligning to create this new positively charged, positively charged world experience on this earth. Like, and we've done it without even, and we do it all the time. We do yeah. it all the fucking time. When we come across harm to children, everyone is just like, fuck that. I want a world where all children are safe and sound. You know, I don't want to have to eat animals like we do right now. I don't want that anymore. I want a new version of that. I don't want to have to kill something so beautiful for food. I want a new version, a rocket of desire. You know, I don't want to have authority over me, rocket of desire. I don't want to live in a system where there's a king or a queen or a prime minister or a president, a rockets of desire. I don't want to have a legal system like this anymore, rockets of desires. I don't want to have to drive and get fined or to pay fees or get taxed or all the other shit that goes on just to drive on a road. Fuck that. I don't want any of that rocket of desire. And we've all collectively done it without any coordination, without any leadership, without any plan. And bang, we're now living in the reset to bring that to um, 
to manifestation. Mm -hmm. It's happening. We yeah, yeah. have torn our world apart. We, we yeah. have torn this world apart. Know that. Yep. I totally agree, man. We, we brought it all about. And that's a good way, you know, if you're, if you are writing your moral code down, which we, we, we employ you all to do, um, you can start with what do you don't, what don't you want? What will you not put up with? It doesn't have to always be, I am this, I am that. It's like, well, I will not put up with this. So that makes me this, right? So, so this is the thing we can work out where we want to go by understanding where we don't want to go. Yep. And know that every time you make a decision like that, you're actively tearing this current reality apart. Just know that. So yep. when all this shit goes down in the next couple of years, it's our fault. We're the ones that have torn it apart because we have desired um, energetically something completely different and we've all done it and it's all gone into the grid and it's all reshaping our realm. We have brought this to pass. Yeah. Our word, our desires, our choices have brought this to pass. So never feel victim to this because we are the ones that have torn it apart because we have seen a different world we want to live in. And that's just how it has to happen. There's no way of skipping through that. That's why they control our reality so much in order exactly. to bring about the exact reality they want. We've fucked all that up. We've exactly. literally fucked all that up <laughs> and we are the ones that have torn this all apart. We're bringing about the reset. We're bringing about the apocalypse. We're bringing about the fall of the celebrities. It's all on us. Totally, hundred percent. That's that's why they have education, the news, the music, all this stuff. It's to show us their version of reality to hold it static to what they want. But when we start going, no, nah, f you, we want this, um, we start changing it, and then this is what exactly what we're seeing. And unfortunately, for to to get something new, you need to walk away from what the old thing, right? It needs to break down, and that's literally what we're seeing at the moment. So, you know, it's all your fault, guys. You did this. <laughs> so when when you when you hear these lofty abstract teachings about creating your reality, just know that you've already created a big chunk of your current reality and like and it's been added to by everyone else who agrees with you. And like there's literally millions and millions of us. So when we look at this new world, this this earth split, this um this new dimension, when we look at this shift in our reality we've already collectively agreed on what that's going to look like we all know so we all know that nature's going to be regenerated and um we're going to be back in it we all know that our food source is going to no longer have poison in it and that's going to stop and we're going to eat well again we know that like the pharmaceutical industry is going to collapse and be replaced by um correct and accurate healing healing um we know that the, the we know that our our superpowers are going to come online we know that energy is going to come through us we know that we're going to grow as um intelligent co-creative um well-resourced individuals we know that we're going to get more powerful i know that you know that we are going to get more powerful we mm. know this we 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 know that the money system is no longer going to be what it has been um utilized so far as a tool of enslavement that's going to change we've already agreed on all of this we've literally already planned the new earth mm. yeah totally and and you know like Kelly said, we we have already changed stuff. We are changing it and 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 creating it right now. Um, and so you know, understand that when you're going down these rabbit holes or you're you know watching stuff, learning new information, that's you creating stuff. Which which is why I always say, make sure you're not focusing mostly on by negative. contrast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot but of but Campbell, it's mostly of, by contrast. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's mostly by contrast. So when you do see the negative, it 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 automatically creates a contrasting rocket desire in you. So yeah, you shan't you hide from the negative. You can't shun. Yeah, mm. exactly, exactly. Yeah. And 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 I think all of those who have not agreed. So the war is on who has the biggest dream. And hands down, yes. we've won. Hands yes. fucking down because look what's happening. Look at the evidence around you. The 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 false <laughs> idols are falling. The the they're using crazy tactics. They are using crazy tactics now that we can all see through. So you know, a hurricane, we know if it's not a hurricane, if it's a hurricane or not a hurricane. We see through it all so quickly, so quickly, so quickly. Literally, you can see whose dream has won. And it's our dream and it's the bigger dream and it's going to bring forth an apocalyptic event to bring forth our reality. And everyone who hasn't agreed to that dream through their own rockets of desire will probably be unlived. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they'll be going to where we're going, right, because their dream is different, but so which is their reality. 
Yeah. And, and this is the thing when we yep. when we look at all this stuff, it's not like like a lot of people still look at things like you know the whole diddler thing. Oh, it's it's a psyop. It's been put out by these people. It's, but that's that's taking your power away. If you understand that it's got nothing to do with that, it's got to do with what you believe is real and, and rockets of desire, what you want to come real, that's so much more powerful than, than, oh, my God, they're manipulating. Oh, my God, it's a psyop. Because then then what are you creating? You're creating a bunch of psyops, right? So understand that that this, we exactly. have done this. We've done it already. And, and with your, your thoughts and beliefs, yep. that's where the power is. That's where the power is. Start saying, yep. so be it after that, right? And 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 this is yeah, the fucking control earth. system falling away is we're starting to see it, but we've got to understand that we're making that. It's us. It's it's not it's not them, you know, the they them's doing all this stuff and and you know still controlling it, us. It's us destroying their control system. And the more we understand that, the and it's retroactive. Goes. And it's retroactive, man. It's all re- yeah, exactly. <clears throat> We, we get to clean up their shenanigans. So right? from that Everything logic, they've done can be fixed. Yeah, I from mean, that perspective. Yep, yep. And from that perspective, when you watch the whole Diddy thing, like from that perspective, you know, you just say, "Fucking excellent, we did yes. that," and it's going to continue, and it's all going to be exposed. And I can't wait, and I'm so excited to have it exposed. And about time. And great, let's go. Fantastic evidence to me that that our desire for this to be cleaned up is happening. Celebrate mm. it. Celebrate all the disclosures. Celebrate the apocalypse we're about to go in because, like, we have brought it to pass. We're responsible. And on that note, you know, for the last couple of years, like, gosh, didn't we all love the asses off the idea of the white hats, which means from this conversation, the white hats are literally a thing and they are playing a role and a part in this because we put so much it's love and joy. That. We all went, when the right hat thing's coming, yep, and all the Q-tips, we were just like, fucking excellent, this is a finally, yay, it's happening. Like we um, we positively, positively, um, what's the word, supported that concept. Yeah. So that concept as well has co- got to come to pass. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that was one of the big groundswells, right, back in 2020 that got a much bigger um, demographic demographic of people involved in, in thinking this way. It was the White Hats. And, and so, you know, this whole conversation of, oh, well, it's all probably crap and all this, it, it, it's not actually helping. And this is what we're trying to say. It's what we believe. If we, if we believe, yeah, they're coming to save us, awesome, they're on our side, we're not here alone, we're not just being many, then, then we create that because we retroactively change the past, which means that suddenly they've always been there, right, because we've just changed the past. And so in which our is, future, it, it's different. Which is inevitable because actually when you come across this information um, in your current moment and you have you organically and naturally shoot off your expression of that, whether it's a contrast desire or whether it's an affirming desire, but you shoot it off. You can't even overthink it. It just happens regardless and naturally. And you all did that. You all went through it. You all, you all voted on the white hats. You did. You did. And when they first emerged, you all cast your vote. And so they are characters in this story. You all cast your vote on Trump and he is a character in this story. You all did that without being manipulated. You just were, you just instantly had a, 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 a frequency response to the concept and to the idea. And you knew that it could fit into this version of reality that would be good and powerful and you were choosing. So you instantly supported it and it's already done, which means mm. it's re-emerging. It's going to happen. Like it's, it's here. It's and already done. It's it, it's just a totally different way to look at it, right? Is it's it's what we believe that comes to be. It's not reality. The reality is just yep. their their moral code or lack of moral code, right? Being imposed on the outer realm. But but if we understand that if we believe Trump's a good guy and he's going to come and he's going to change things and and save a lot of people and all this stuff. That's what will happen. If you think, oh, he's probably a psyop, he's probably this, he's probably that, that's what will happen. Like we're literally bringing this stuff into so much more, it's much more important to to believe what you believe, to decide what you believe and to, to manifest that rather than to sort of like look at all the bad. Because one thing that we, that is guaranteed is whenever we have a different thought, the system's going to pop up 
and go, that's wrong. Come back here. Come back and believe like us. Look, look at this. He's he's a shield. This was fake. This is fake. Look at he's connected here and here. And we'll give you as much evidence as you need to let go of your moral beliefs. But this is the game. We've got yeah. to know who we are, what yeah. our beliefs are, and stick to that without being swayed. And once, if you don't know who you are, you can't do that. But once you know who you are and what you stand for, then you can do that. And once you understand how reality is created, it's a Taurus, right? The now is in the middle, the past and the future are both being created by what we do Running now. Running through you. Yeah. Running through you. That's right. Simultaneously, at the same time, running through you, very much alive, like a live model code. The past is alive. The future is alive. The now is alive. It's all It's all alive. It's all your current experience. It's all your current experience. And <laughs> the thing with, and I think the the subtlety of manifestation, Campbell, where I, where usually I have a gripe with you where, about this focus on what you want and usually, and I'm never able to express it exactly, but I think Subtly, it comes down to understanding, truly understanding that the majority of what you bring forward into reality is already been created when you first came upon it and naturally set out a rocket of desire for or against it. Like the contrasting element of your original moment experience with it is actually the true manifestation. And then mm. after that, you're really trying to, you're really trying to force yourself. You're really trying to force yourself to to think that way but quite effortlessly the ease of frequency and energy is that it is it happens immediately mm. immediately straight away straight away but as we go through this like trying to negotiate this like as so far let's go back five years this um you know authoritarian parasitic realm that we were living in but while we were trying to negotiate that and desiring something opposite to that that made manifestation very hard work very mm. clumsy work mm. but now on the topics of the earth we want to live in the realm we want this sort of reality we want to experience this is like boom to the point where we're about to enter an apocalypse thanks to us to bring it all down and reconfigure it like you can feel that like the pulse from it. And another Abraham technique, gosh, I haven't gone to Abraham at the while, uh, for ages, but another amazing technique she used to teach was that um, the rockets of desire are literally, if you look at a, a rocket ship and how it's got like five parts to it and it starts using the the push of that engine, that combustion, that, that sort of fire that shoves it up. Well, it doesn't. It's just, I'm not talking from <laughs> Albert, is, yeah. reality. I'm talking from the metaphor. That exactly, Abraham. yeah. <laughs> and, so yeah, yeah, just to be clear. <laughs> and also I would like to say that Esther Higgs also, um, you know, she supported the jab. So, I mean, you know, I'm not like, but what I'm saying is that from this analogy, you send off this first rocket of desire, this first pulse, and then it, it moves you forward and then it cruises for a bit. And then another rocket desire will come into your reality that forms a contrast and then it'll shoot off the next bit. And, then, and it does this like four or five times until eventually the magnetic pull of what you desire and it's coming about is so strong that you just you just land. The, 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 magnet, the magnetic energy just pulls you into your reality. And it can take five pulses five pushes and it's interesting because when we talk about resets like over and over and over again I'll hear the word well we we've got five resets coming up you know and we're in stage one or in stage two or in stage three just like the analogy of the rocket ship until it's inevitable and it is done mm. and that's what to me is happening on this realm right now bloody oath all right oh. so um Time is retroactive, guys. You are the creator and you've <laughs> created everything that's going on and it's all your fault. So keep going. But I think that's so, uh, make it so or so be it. It's like um, Star Trek. So be make it. it. So, you know, when you say something, like, like that's a yeah. story, right? So be it. Make it make it true. And, and when you've got your morals, then you can stay on that course of your rockets of desires, right? Because when your first rocket goes off, Creates a big flash, man. The powers of B will see that and they will move in and they'll be like, no, nah, come over here, come over here. No, nah, come, nah, look at this, look at this. So one, once we understand that that's yep. insignificant, what is much, much more powerful is what we believe and, and who we are. And if we stay on course and we can deflect all this stuff yep. and not even give it our attention, then, then we go so much faster and, and create so much quicker. If you think about it, when we started to... Um like debunk what was 
Um, and for me, it was way back. And I think probably the first action I took was to stop using fluorinated toothpaste, like way back 25 years oh, ago. Yeah. And then suddenly I was able to buy a, um, fluoride free toothpaste in the supermarket. Like it just appeared into reality. Yeah, and then, you know, like we sort of like stopped yep 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 um and i stopped watching news and stuff and then suddenly i could buy dvds that people had made um documentaries or interviews on the topics i was interested in um you know suddenly like we started to get really conscious of the poison in our food and suddenly you can buy organics like like it's quite amazing how through our lifetime this lifetime um as we've shifted our um perception things have become available which means all the things that you have ever desired have already been generated and created and totally available to you right now. You can go and purchase these things right now. I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking about healing modalities. Well, if you want to, if you want to work with the healing modalities I see in our future, then you would go and buy a sort of frequency machine. Would you not? Like they're already available right now. You know, <clears throat> and it's interesting, Campbell, because when we look at the Tartarian realm, one of the most beautiful things that happened, and I, I'd like to end on this, because this is a part of when we very first started doing Tartaria, not only did we like talk about how marvelous it was that it was tangible, um, we also talked about how important the imagination and creativity was. And if you look at the last five years through the Tartarian lens, it has been forerunners and highly creative, highly imaginative minds that have been able to go in, scrape past the blinders and actually start to see things in a totally different way. It mm. took pure mm -hmm. human creativity. Yep. And that's that's like call out to Martin Leckie because that's one that's thing I fucking Martin. loved about yes. Martin was that hey, I just... Martin. Yeah, for sure. I just loved how imaginative his mind was, right? How creative, how he was. And like that characteristic, oh, 100%. And that characteristic, it just like embodies the last five years of the recategorizing and re coordinating of history. It, it's, it's, it's such a cool proof that, that my, all this information that, that we've got in Tartaria has started off as an imagining maybe this happened, maybe that, and then the yeah. proof has come. It's a completely different yeah. way than what we're taught. We're taught, yeah. no, you've got to go through the, the facts and the books and then prove it from, from our past, right, which doesn't exist. It's not, it's, it's not a static thing. So, yeah, everything in, in this research has come off as, you know, like people just using creativity. How could this work? What is this? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, the whole free energy thing. Yep. And now you look around, there's people coming out with free energy devices. We have all these stuff everywhere, you know, the healing modalities, yep. all this stuff. It's there. So this is, you know, this is why our focus matters so much is you can run around going, oh my God, they're poisoning all the food. Look at what they're doing in the supermarket. It's all product. It's going to kill us all. But you can also just focus on wow, we've got all the best food we want. It's right there. We don't have to go to supermarkets. We've got farmer's markets. We've got organics. We've got regenerative. We've got all this stuff. We've got all the answers. And if we focus on that, then we make that bigger. If we focus on the problem, we make that bigger. So this is the thing. We've created this. So yeah. let's start enjoying it and going, look what we did. Don't worry about the other stuff. If people want to go to supermarkets, that's their choice but we don't have to because we've already created Absolutely. a solution within our, our, you know, creativity that, that creates the solution. Yeah. And just know, just know everyone that it wasn't until Tartaria when it started to get crazy imaginative, when it started, I mean, you, you had to decide if the mountains were actually giant tree trunks. Like we had to, like, it got super creative in there and super imaginative. And now look what's happened. We've bought about an apocalypse. So, you know, I just want to say a testament to the power of, you know, shared yeah. creativity. Look well, what we can fast. actually do. We can actually just like blow up the world and start again. <laughs> yeah, man. So this is the thing, man. We're all doing right. it. We're all powerful. Let's keep going. Bring on the apocalypse, <laughs> which is the unveil. All right, everyone.
<clears throat> yes, we have rambled. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Yes, um, and on so we start the when this show airs. Actually, Campbell, how are you going to do this? Because when this show airs, we're going to be on the fast. But I want you to promote the fast. You're going to have to air this tonight. Maybe I'll air it tonight. Whatever Wednesday, yeah, I'll get it up and put the whole thing up yep. tonight. I think so. We just have to do it because we're trying to like get as many people to join us for this. Crazy fast plan of ours, the fastening. It's called the fastening, the quickening. Every fastening. time you do a water fast, by the way, it is a quickening. It's a, it quickening, a quickening in your reality. Just know that. Once you Fucking stop, shit happens really quickly crazy. when you've done something. Like, yep. Yeah, man. Yep. It's just true. It's you're, It's fast. It's fast. You're fasting. You're entering a quickening. So just know that. Well, All right. Excellent. Fast. Well, um, fantastic. All right, everyone. Well, that was a fun conversation. I hope you got a lot out of that. Um, lots to chew on there and ultimately extremely empowering and completely, um, yeah. I think it's good. I think it's a good concept. <laughs> Let us know what you think. Leave us a comment. Share this video yeah. around. Uh, you'll find the link for the fast in uh, in the description as well. And, yeah, let us know what you think. Are you going to write your moral code? What are some of your morals? What have you changed in reality? Let us know. Yep. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful, beautiful, perfect week, and we will see you next week on Tartaria Australia. Yes, or on Friday night if you're doing the fast. Stay awesome. Oh, yes, or on Friday night. See you guys. Bye.